going on, world? DS1 Ross, and I'm back. Shout out to everybody. I appreciate all the love that y'all have for me and DS1. Sheep Stay Sleep TV. Much love to y'all. I'm back here. As I promised. With the kickoff of the 2019 Black History Month series. Black History Month series of 2019, y'all. This is something I do every year here on Sheep Stay Sleep TV. I started this in 2017. It started just as an idea. You know, um, I do consider myself a black first individual. No, I am not pro-black, but I am black first. I do um, believe in the upliftment of, of my people and um, us building with each other first first and foremost and that's what i consider myself and why i consider myself black first so um this was an idea i came up with back in 2017 um during black history month and i just said why don't i come up with a series here on my channel to um educate my viewers and maybe my viewers children on Black history that is not taught in school. Because we all been to school and we all know and understand that they don't teach us our correct history. There's a lot of history we do not know. And this is why I like to surround myself with people who knows more than me. You know, a lot of people, they, they begin to feel inferior around people who know more than them. I don't. I actually love to be around people that I can learn from. You know, um, so this is why I came up with this series because I know a lot of a lot of you guys have children and um of course they're going to school and they're being taught their history from another person's perspective. You know, we need our history taught by us, to us. That's the only way we're gonna get correct history. Because if we just allow other people to teach us our history, those people are, are only gonna pick the people who they like. We have to understand that. And just think about it. Look at the people who they chose to teach you about in school. Those are all the people who um, who American um, society agreed upon to speak about. But there's a whole lot of black history out here that we don't know about. And I just want to bring a glimpse of it here on my platform. So I just gave y'all a short synopsis on why I created this series just in case. And this is for the people who are just tuning into the Black History Month series. I have a, a lot of new supporters and um, they probably want to know what was the reason for me creating it. So that's the reason why. And um, this is something I'm going to continue with doing. So um, I appreciate everybody. Um, if you are here, I will appreciate it and like if you hit the like button. Much love to all of y'all. Shout out to everybody that's in the chat room. Of course. Um, I'm going to give the people a couple of more minutes and then we're going we gonna to kick this uh, show off. Shout out to my brother JT in the chat. Shout out to Red Bull. I appreciate you coming to hit that like button. Shout out to my brother Doug. 
the diplomat. Always supporting. Shout out to my brother Shug on a check in. Day one supporter always. That's my bro. He already know. I appreciate all y'all. I appreciate everybody that's listening. Um, if you are listening, do me a favor and please share this show. Please share it. And make sure y'all hit that like button. But the number one I had to kick it off with with this person because um he's considered the father of black history. This is something I didn't know. Um, a lot of other people may have knew this, but I didn't know this until I actually, you know, got into this person. And this this black historian I'm talking about is Carter G. Woodson. Um, this is a name I've heard when I was in school, but this was a guy that was never really spoken about too much. His name would come up, but no one ever really went into depth about, you know, what this guy actually done. You know, nobody went into depth about the life and the accomplishments of Carter G. Woodson. Like I said, he's considered the father of black history. So, without further ado, let's get into who Carter G. Woodson is. Carter G. Woodson, also known as Carter Goodwin Woodson. He was born in New Canton, Virginia on December 19th of the year 1875. So he was basically born 10 years after. Y'all know what that is. He's an American historian who first opened the long neglected field of black studies. Did y'all hear that? I'm going to read that again. He was the first to open up black studies to scholars and also popularize the field in schools and colleges of black people. So he's the one who created the black studies course and all of your HBCUs and all of the other um, institutions, educational institutions that allow black studies. He's the one who created this, Carter G. Woodson. It says, he, long he opened the long neglected field of black studies to scholars and also popularized the field in schools and colleges of black people to focus attention on black contributions to civilization. This is the this is the reason for black studies. The same reason why I'm doing this Black History Month series and have been doing it since 2017. To focus the attention on black contributions to civilization. I want our people and our children to understand what we have contributed to the world. To people. This is the reason for this. And he was the first person to actually think about doing this. And when I say think about doing it, I'm I'm saying actually erecting something. In American society, I'm not talking about 500 or 1000 years ago. He also founded in 1926 Negro History Week. He 
He basically was born into a poor family. He supported by working in coal mines of Kentucky and was thus unable to enroll in high school until he was 20. He was so poor that he couldn't go to school. He was so poor that he could not go to school. He had to work. He didn't get into high school until he was 20 years old because he had to support himself because his family was so poor. This is this. I always find that our people always tend to come out of the most craziest situations, man. I notice that a lot with our people. You know, when it comes to our people, man, our resiliency level is 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 crazy. So let's continue. He, he had to work in coal mines to support himself. So he wasn't able to enroll in high school until he was 20. After graduating in less than two years, he taught high school, wrote articles, studied at home and abroad, and received his PhD from Harvard University in 1912. Did y'all hear that? He only did high school for two years. He finished high school. In two years, he finished high school. Then he started teaching in the high schools. Wrote articles, studied at home and abroad, and then received his PhD from Harvard in 1912. In 1915, he founded the, the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History to encourage scholars to engage in the intensive study of the Black past. So three years after receiving his PhD, he created an association that Black people can be a part of to help promote the education of black studies. This is what he was doing. He wanted the world to know what black people have contributed to the world. This is what his duty was. Prior to this work, the field had been largely neglected or distorted in the hands of historians who accepted the traditionally biased picture of blacks in America and world affairs. So basically what they're saying is prior to what Carter G. Woodson created, it was a biased picture of black people. And we all know that. That's why in this time we had segregation. Of course, there was hot black people were um, highly prejudiced against, of course. And this is because of the traditional biased picture that America had for us. So what they just basically admitted that everybody was racist to back to black people. And they were taught to be racist and prejudiced against us. The world was. The world and in America. Because of the picture that was painted of us. I hear a lot of us like to talk about our image here on YouTube. This guy, Carter G. Woodson, was trying to change the image of us 
in America and abroad in the world by creating educational tools, by putting things in the educational institution. A lot of us like to talk about the educational system, but there's a lot of things in these educational institutions that we can learn about ourselves because you had guys like this who started the black studies course. You see? In 1916, Woodson edited the first issue of the association's principal scholarly publication, The Journey of Negro History, which under his direction remained an important historical periodical for more than 30 years. You see? So what he wants to do is he wants to make the story of black people prominent. You see? He wants our history, our history to be remembered and prominent in society. He wants the world to know this about black people. Not just people in America, but the world. Woodson was dean of the College of Liberal Arts and head of the graduate factory faculty, I'm sorry, at Howard University, which is what? A HBCU? Washington, D.C. For a year, he was, he was the, uh, the dean. He also was the dean at West Virginia State for two years, from 1920 to 1922. While there, he founded and became president of Associated Publishers to bring out books on black life and culture since experience had shown him that the usual publishing outlets were rarely interested in scholarly works on blacks you see why he's in you see why this guy's important to know about because he's doing the same work that a lot of us are having streams about saying that black people need to do now history already shows that we've had people that's been doing it nothing is new under the sun you see he founded a a, a publishing um company because he wanted to put out books to tell our story Because he noticed in his time, there weren't no books out about black life. So what is he also dealing with? He's dealing with media. He's dealing with changing our narrative to our people, to how we think about ourselves and how people think about us in the world. Important works by Woodson include the widely consulted college text, The Negro in Our History, The Education of the Negro Prior to 1861, and A Century of Negro Migration. Those are his important works. Also, what people didn't know about um Carter, Dr. Carter G. Woodson was, he um he has his own African American museum. And his museum, this museum is located in St. Petersburg, Florida. So if y'all ever want to visit, it's in St. Petersburg, Florida. Dr. Carter G. Woodson's African American Museum. Now, let's read a little bit more about him on his website.
The website is woodsonmuseum.org. The father of Black History Month, Dr. Carter G. Woodson, was born in 1875 in New Canton, Virginia. He was the son of former slaves. In 1907, he obtained his BA degree from the University of Chicago. See, they're giving you a little bit more of his educational background. In 1912, he received his PhD from Harvard. So he got a BA from the University of Chicago and he got his PhD from Harvard. In 1915, he and his friends established the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History. A year later, the Journal of Negro History began quarterly publication. So he had a, a, um, a publication that came out every few months. Every three months, he had a... Um, um, uh, um, a publication that came out. It was called the Journal, the Journal of Negro History. You see, that's powerful. We we talk about how powerful media is. In 1926, Woodson proposed and launched the annual February observance of. Negro History Week, which became Black History Month in 1976. See, this, this whole Black History Month thing started out as a week, as just one week that he created in 1926, where we celebrated our history. It was just a week, but it became Black History Month in 1976. Hence why they call him the father of Black History Month. It is said that he chose February for the observance because February 12th was Abraham Lincoln's birthday and February 14th was the accepted birthday of Frederick Douglass. Hmm, that's interesting. Dr. Woodson was the founder of the Associated Publishers, the founder and editor of the Negro History Bulletin, and the author of more than 30 books. His best known publication is The Miseducation of the Negro, originally published in 1933 and still prominent today, pertinent today. He died in 1950, but Dr. Woodson's scholarly legacy goes on. Now let's get into the mission of this museum. The mission of the museum, it says, the mission is twofold. First, the mission is to preserve to preserve, present, and interpret African American history and to engage a broad and diverse audience through these activities. So that goes back to what I said. He wants the world to know, understand, and respect what black people brought to civilization, to life. And he wants to preserve, present, and interpret our history. This is what he want people to do. This is the purpose and the mission of the museum. Next, to promote and understanding among various groups that comprise the St. Petersburg community to enhance our ability as a society to respect, value diversity, and foster equal rights in social justice. So basically he wants everybody to understand who we are, 
Because if people will begin to understand who black people are, if other races was, was to begin to understand who we are and respect who we are, then we'll be able to get along better in society. The impact that they want this museum to have on the St. Petersburg community is the history of the African Americans in St. Petersburg community and throughout the African diaspora will be the central focus of programming at the Dr. Carter G. Woodson's African American Museum. The museum serves to preserve the rich history for present and future generations of St. Petersburg residents and visitors to St. Petersburg. So basically, they want people to understand the history of the African Americans that are in St. Petersburg, Florida, and throughout the world. They want the people who live there and for generations to come to understand our history, where they currently are and where they come from. And that makes a lot of sense because if other cultures respected our culture and revered us the way they supposed to and did business with us because of those things, we would be um function better in society. But see, people don't respect our history. They take our history and, and they they do whatever they want with it. It's our job that we protect and preserve our history and that we make people respect our history. And this is a perfect way to do it, is to actually create a museum. Because it's 2019. This guy is the child of slaves. And we're, we're still talking about him today. Shout out to Doug on that super chat. I appreciate it. So. We got to understand how important preserving our history is. And we also have to find out how to actually do it. I think one of the smartest ways is to create a museum. I think that was genius. I'm glad he, um, he did that. So that is the history of the father of black history, Carter G. Woodson. Um, y'all can, um, if y'all want to, check out some of his books, The Miseducation of a Negro. Check that out. That's his um his book. Um, if y'all would like to visit the museum, the museum is in St. Petersburg, Florida. Y'all can get all the information from here. Um woodsonmuseum.org woodsonmuseum.org so if y'all want to know who the father of black history month is if somebody was to ever act shot this tell them carter g woodson and if they want to know more you can direct them right here to Sheep Stay Sleep TV.
and let them listen to this dissertation. Because he created what we know today as black studies. It's because of him. So let me go through the chat. Let me shout out everybody. Thanks for everybody for tuning in tonight for the first installment of the Black History Month series of 2019. We are just heating up, fam. We are just heating up. I got some heaters for y'all. Um, Shout out to my brother, JT. Shout out to my brother, Doug, the diplomat. Once again, thanks for the uh, super chat donation. Shout out to Handlin Jones on the check-in. Shout out to my fam, Hills In. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to Red Bull for, the, for tuning in. I appreciate it. Shout out to my brother, Shug, for, for the checking in. And I appreciate everybody else who's listening. Um, Stay tuned. Later on, I will be back with the second installment of the Black History Month series of 2019. I appreciate all the love and the support. And I'll catch y'all on the next one. This is DS1 Ross. Representing Sheep Stay Sleep TV. We out. Peace.